Greetings students, I am here to talk to you about using proportions to solve percent problems. So many of these problems you may have other ways that you already know how to solve, but some of the problems that are used less frequently, um, you might get confused of if you should be multiplying or dividing or if you should divide, which way should it go. And so if we set them up in proportions, we have that way that we can always set up our percent problem. So when we do this, we want to think about the part over the base is equal to the percent over 100. And then once we have a proportion set up where we know three out of four of these things, we know we can cross multiply and then divide to find our solution. So that's how that's going to work out for us. Um, and so to decide between the part and the base, the base typically follows the word of. It might also, you might think of it as being the total or the whole or the original amount. Um, the percent is easy. It has the word, you know, it has a percent sign. Um, or if it said what percent, then you know that X is the percent. Um, and the part, um, is just that individual amount that is part of the base or that it's the percent of the base. And so as we practice, then you'll kind of see which ones goes where. Go where. So 30%, so 30 is over our 100, of 90. So I see the word of, so what follows of is my base. And then that means what we're looking for will often also say that the part is associated with the word is, but we'll, we'll have numbers on both sides of is, so that's not always as reliable. Um, but what, there's my x, what is 30% of 90? So I have the 30% of 90. And then from there, of course, we can cross multiply. and then divide, and you might just put that all in your calculator, 90 times 30, divide it by 100, and we get 27. So 30% of 90 is 27. And that should seem reasonable, right? Most of us know that 50% is 1 half, and this would be less than half, but it's not a very tiny amount, so it's reasonable. All right, next up. Close my little window down there. So this time we're still plugging into that same percent proportion. This time we have what percent of 50 is 17? So what percent? So I don't know the number over 100. Now I have to decide which of these two numbers is the base and which is the part. So what follows of? What percent of 50? So 50 is my base. That means 17 is my part. And yes, it, it's we're there with the word is, but 50 is also next to is. So that's why I meant about is isn't always very reliable away. Um, now we'll still cross multiply. And then we'll divide. And then since the question asks what percent, when we give the answer, we'll put a percent sign on it. Sometimes, just like with all proportions, you might see something that just tells you the answer before you cross multiply. For instance, 50 goes into 100 two times. So if I multiply 17 times 2, I get 34. So there's a little shortcut there. So sometimes you might be able to use some mental math to come up with the answer, but if not, proportions are definitely your friend. So here, 22 is 25% of what number? So 25%, definitely 25 is over my 100, 
And this after of, it says of what? So we don't know the base, and 22 is our part. So once we have things placed, we still cross multiply, and then we'll still be dividing to solve. Notice we already have something in the problem with a percent sign, so 88 is not a percent. 88 is just a number, so 22 is 25% of 88. 25%, that's like a quarter or a fourth, so that is the same as dividing by 4. So 22 is 1 fourth of 88. If I divide 88 by 4, I do get 22, so it works. So I'm going to go now to show you um, a few of the IXL lessons that I've assigned um, for you to practice this. So you don't have paper practice, instead you're going to have IXL practice. All right, so this is the first of the IXL lessons. Um, this one is L6. Um, remember, they will pop up in your recommendations on the day they're assigned. Um, you could go look for them prior to that, but otherwise they'll pop up on the day they're assigned. Try not to overwhelm everyone by having too many pop up at once. Um, so this says, what is 100% of 70? So 100% would mean the whole thing. So I don't really need to set up a proportion to do that. If it's 100%, it is the whole thing. So that would be $70. Sorry about that. 50% of $6. Now, you may already have a pretty good idea of what this would be, because 50% is something we deal with a lot. But let's just see that we could use our proportion. Six is after the of, and when I cross multiply, I get three. I could also think of 50%, meaning one half, and do one half times six. Half of, uh, sorry about that, not half of three. Half of times six, which would be the same as saying six divided by two, which is also three. We can also change the percent to a decimal, and then multiply, and we still get three. So there are at least three different good ways to do this problem, um, but when I show you the examples, I'm going to show you with a proportion because that's kind of what our lessons have been about. But as long as you're doing the work yourself, you may use a calculator, but as long as you're doing the work yourself, I don't mind if you use one of the other methods. For when I have numbers on both sides of the word of, it is going to be a multiplication, but you do have to move the decimal point. So you don't have to worry about moving decimal points um, in a proportion, and the proportion will work even if it's not a multiplication problem. So that's why that's the way I'm showing you. It also just goes with the rest of our lesson. So 75% of 28, 75 over 100, x over 28. Now 75% is the same as 3 fourths, and if you know that, you may be able to more quickly come up with that the answer is 21. If you're thinking, oh my, where in the world did you get 21? Well, you are certainly welcome to still cross multiply and then divide. And you still get 21. Remember, we're crisscross, not showing you that so much because we've done other proportion work at this, work, at this point. But sometimes, if we know a fraction that it's equivalent to, we might see what the number would be. So these so far have all been very similar. Um, we are still finding the percent. So 
if you did them with a decimal, they would all be multiplication. And if you're doing them with our proportion, all of these problems so far have all been the percent over 100 we know, and we don't know the part. These are all missing the part. So they're all very similar in this particular lesson. And remember that in IXL, you also have um, there are the little videos or the learn with an example that you can also watch. So let's go to the next one because I have multiple of these that I would like you to do. Um, we have some that are word problems. All right. So this will be some good English practice and some good reading comprehension practice in addition to math. Also helps us to see that what we're learning is actually useful. Um, so a biology class examines some flowers in a local meadow. It does have the little logo or the little symbol there. You can push to have it read to you. Um, and so if they saw 20 flowers of which, of which, okay, so those 20, that of is referring back to those 20. So the 20 is our base. We don't know the part, and it's 20%, so 20 over 100. So we have two different 20s in this problem. So then when I cross multiply, I have 100x is equal to 400, divide, and I get x is 4. And if we said 20% were perennials, those are the flowers that come back every year. So 20% are perennials, so less than half. So four is a reasonable number here. And notice at the beginning, before we've answered our first question, we do have that option that says learn with an example. So the wording is gonna be different different applications, but all of these are looking for the part because it says percents of numbers. So all of these are going to set up very similar, all right? So they're all going to set up in a very similar matter, manner that we are looking for our part out of the whole, and we know our percent out of 100 which means we also have the option of changing our percent to a decimal and multiplying. So the percent to a decimal would come back two places to the left, and I could just do this times 420. That does the same thing as the 70 over 100 in our proportion. All right, so all those problems were multiplication. They may have all been problems that you might think setting up a proportion doesn't seem very important because I can just do it with multiplication. And I would say you're right that once you have the hang of it, those may not show us the more powerful of proportion. It's when we get into some of these things um, where we're not sure which, um, which operation we should do. So for instance, in L9, Now, in this case, they kind of gave us a little bit of a hint because it says write your answer using a percent sign. But these are going to be mixed up. They're not all going to be looking for the same thing. So 42 of the 56 teachers, so after of was 56. This is 42. There can be situations where the top number is bigger than the bottom number if it was more than 100%. So don't just always make the assumption that the bigger number goes on bottom, even though right now that might be what's happening. And so then when I cross multiply, then I should come up with 75%. Uh, and please read the directions. If it says that we need to 
write the answer using a percent, then please don't forget to put in your percent because it would get counted wrong if we only write 75. So this is still asking us what percentage of the seats, same kind of question as the last one. Again, we know we are looking for the percent. If I don't have anything in my problem that has a percent, I'm looking for the percent. Now this is telling me this is the, there's not another level, so perhaps these do all stay the same. Um, I don't have a good way to look ahead to see that, sorry. Um, so it looks like these may all be finding the percent, all right? Um, and so those are some examples from the lessons. Um, hopefully I see you back in class soon, and, um, but I hope that these videos are helpful in the meantime. Thank you.